Hey there, how are you doing? My name is Angel and I like all things that are mysterious. And so this is going to be part two. I never did finish the 27 most haunted hotels in America. So this is the part two that I haven't did yet. So let's just get right back into where we were. Ah, oh, it took me back. I'm sad. I had it all set up. And then I clicked out of it. Aww. Okay. The Omni Grove Park Inn, Asheville, North Carolina. <coughs> the Omni Grove Park Inn in Asheville, North Carolina has long been thought to have supernatural forces. The hotel's most well-known story, however, is that of the Pink Lady. This local lore tells of a young woman who died here in the 1920s by falling off a balcony. Luckily for hotel guests, this supposed phantom is said to be gentle and friendly, although many inn patrons are convinced she likes to pull pranks. Stories of lights turning on and off, doors opening and closing, and objects mysteriously being moved around are common. Some guests have even reported feeling that their feet being tickled in the middle of the night. The pink lady's spirit is said to appear to guests as a pink floating mist. She can apparently be found in room 545. So consider booking a different room if you'd rather avoid these paranormal practical jokes. The address is 290 Macon Avenue, Asheville, North Carolina, 28804. The next one is the Marshall House, Savannah, Georgia. Built as one of the oldest hotels in Savannah, a quaint Georgia city with ghost tours galore, the Marshall House was used as a hospital for the Union during the Civil War. <coughs> and then again during two yellow fever epidemics. In 1999, the hotel was finally renovated and reopened to the public as an elegant gateway for leisure travelers. Today, many visitors believe that the hotel's extensive history is to blame for the unusual occurrences that have been witnessed within its walls. If you book a room at this charming Savannah property, you might be in for a scare or two. Past guests have described hearing phantom children running down the hallways in the middle of the night watching faucets turn on and off by themselves, and seeing apparitions. There have also been reports of toilets overflowing with no warning and doorknobs wiggling inexplicably. The Marshall House is particularly known for its gaggle of ghostly children. These kids can supposedly be heard laughing and bouncing marbles in the halls late at night. If you're lucky, maybe you'll even catch a glimpse of them. Their address is 123 East Broughton Street, Savannah, Georgia, 31401. The next one is the Hotel Chelsea, New York City. New York City's famed Hotel Chelsea opened in 1884. Since its inception, the Manhattan Hotel has been used as an informal artist get getaway for famous residents such as Patti Smith, Mark Twain, Andy Warhol, Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix, and Janis Joplin. But that doesn't mean its history has always been glamorous. Many strange deaths have occurred at the property, including several suicides and murders, earning it a spot on the list of New York City's most haunted hotels. Some of the hotel's alleged ghostly inhabitants include Mary, a woman who survived the Titanic but lost her husband, and Larry, a specter who will talk to anyone willing to listen. Their address is 222 West 23rd Street, New York City, New York, 10011. And the next one, ooh, Mizpah Hotel? Never heard of this one either. There's a lot of these I haven't heard of. Tanapaw, Nevada. This Victorian-inspired Nevada hotel, opened in 1907, was once a luxurious hotel for miners and wealthy investors looking to cash in on the Tonopah Silver Broom. 
Today, Mizpah Hotel is best known as a hotbed for the paranormal. The property's most famous ghostly guest is undoubtedly the Lady in Red, said to be the spirit of a prostitute who was brutally murdered by a jealous suitor. Ever since, stories of the Lady in Red abound, with past travelers finding pearls left beneath their pillows and their belongings mysteriously moved. Their address is 100 North Main Street, Tonopah, Nevada, 89049. The next one, I swear I haven't heard of like any of these. Hotel Sorrentino, I think I said that right, Seattle. Boasting Italian Renaissance style architecture and seven stories of well-appointed rooms and suites, this upscale property in downtown Seattle, Washington is no stranger to paranormal activity. Over the years, one particular ghostly spirit has captured the attention of guests. You just might see Alice B. Tokolas, the life partner of Gertrude Stein, wandering around Hotel Sereno, Sorrentino, I just said it three different ways already now, and causing the lights to flicker. She has been apparently known to move the drinking glasses of unsuspecting guests around Stella. I don't know what the Stella is. Hanging out in room 408 and even play the piano on the top floor. Their address is 900 Madison Street, Seattle, Washington, 98104. The next one is Concord's Colonial Inn, Concord, Massachusetts. Don't be surprised if you feel a slight chill when strolling through the halls of Concord's Colonial Inn. Parts of this historic property have been around since 1716, making it one of the oldest hotels in the U.S., Situated about 20 miles northwest of Boston, this quaint New England inn still features many of its original fixtures. Including stories suggest some of its original residents. Back in the 1770s, room 24 on the second floor was used as an operating room for wounded soldiers. Now travelers reserve this very room in the hopes of witnessing its ghostly activities firsthand. Past guests have reported flickering lights, shadowy figures, and disembodied voices. These strange happenings extend to the rest of the hotel as well, with employees and guests spotting apparitions in the sitting room. And their address is 48 Monument Square, Concord, Massachusetts, 01742. The next one. I have not heard, I swear, of the last several. This one's called Admiral Fell Inn in Baltimore. Facing Baltimore's Patapusco River, probably said that wrong, <laughs> the Admiral Fell Inn is a fascinating chapter in Maryland's history. Before it was an inn, the property was home to establishments like a vinegar factory, a YMCA for sailors, and a boarding house for actors. Some travelers who have stayed in the hotel mention seeing apparitions of butlers and floating sailors. A hotel manager once reported hearing what sounded like a loud party going on upstairs, but the hotel was empty at that time. Visitors looking to learn more about the inn's spooky history can take the Admiral's historic ghost tour and brave souls can opt to stay overnight in room 413. It was in this very room that Christopher Jones was murdered in 1999. Ever since, several housekeepers and guests have had an eerie feeling whenever going inside. Some feel a sudden cold spot, while others swear they see shadows darting around the room or feel a hand resting on their, sh on their shoulder. I can't ever talk. Their address is 888 South Broadway, Baltimore, Maryland, 21231. I guess I should have said 21231. There we go. That sounds a lot better. This one I've never heard of either. The Red Lion Inn. I have so many to add to the haunted bucket list. I'm excited. The Red Lion Inn, Stockbridge, Massachusetts. The roots of the Red Lion Inn and the Berkshires of Massachusetts can be traced all the way back to the 18th century. In the lead up to the American Revolution, people gathered here to protest the British 
Parliament's acts of intolerance. Can't get it together. Passing res resolutions and vowing to boycott British goods. But while many travelers have passed through the Red Lion Inn over the years, including five U.S. presidents, legend has it that the others never left. If you consider yourself an entrepreneur, ghost, oh, an amateur, well, don't know why it shut off, but here we go. We're just going to keep going, but I messed up. If you consider yourself an amateur ghost hunter, try to book a room on the fourth floor. It is considered particularly haunted. A young ghost girl is rumored to roam the halls here carrying flowers, along with a phantom man dressed in a top hat. Several paranormal experiences have supposedly occurred in room 301 as well. One guest reported that their bed sheet was tugged in the middle of the night while another felt their toes being pulled on while they were asleep. Hey, maybe the ghost was just trying to pop your toes. You know, I don't know. Other visitors have described hearing disembodied voices and feeling cold spots. The address is 30 Main Street, Stockbridge, Massachusetts, 01262. We're just going to keep in this realm that we've never heard of places, apparently. This one's called the Sagamore Resort, Bolton Landing, New York. This upstate New York property, set on an island in, on Lake George in the, oh my god, Adronox... I don't think I said that right, but whatever. Has built up quite a reputation as a hot spot for paranormal activity. Stories recount a woman in white blowing cold air on Sagamore Resort's guest eyelids as they slept. A couple, a phantom couple sitting down for dinner in the dining room and ghostly children giggling in the hallways. One young boy in particular is said to haunt the golf course stealing golf balls, and throwing them at unsuspecting guests. A hotel chef, chef can't talk, reportedly quit after the spirit of a woman spoke to him and walked through him in the kitchen. If you do decide to book a hotel room at this luxurious property, be warned, you may hear some things go bump in the night. Their address is 110 Sagamore Road, Bolton Landing, New York, 12814. So, I've talked about a union station, okay? There are many union stations across the United States. I realize this. So, here's a different one. The Union Station Nashville Yards, Nashville. Originally a bustling train terminal, the Union Station Nashville Yards autograph collection now bills itself as a luxurious hotel. Oh, luxury hotel. I'm just adding words that aren't even there. But for those in the know, this historic downtown Nashville property is also a prime destination for ghost hunting. One of the hotel's most famous resident ghosts is a young woman in her early 20s named Abigail. As the story goes, her beloved was killed fighting in World War II. Distraught, Abigail flung herself in front of a moving train in the same station where she'd said goodbye to him before he was sent to France. That's kind of, wow. Ever since, guests have claimed to see her waiting in the terminal, roaming the halls, or hanging out in room 711. Guests who have stayed in room 711 have reported flickering lights, apparitions photographed in mirrors, sudden cold spots, and strange noises coming from the ceiling. Their address is 1001 Broadway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. And the next one, oh, I didn't even realize a lot. I I think I've only heard of maybe the, the top couple ones. And all these are just new. They're all just new. Lord Baltimore Hotel. Baltimore. Many believe that ghosts appear in places where tragedy has occurred and the Lord Baltimore Hotel is no different. During the Great Depression, at least 20 people jumped to their deaths from its rooftop deck. Oh my God. As the 23rd story hotel was one of the tallest buildings in the state at the time. It is rumored that the spirits can still be found wandering the property. Over the years, many hotel guests have also reported seeing the apparition of a little girl with a red ball roaming around the 19th floor. 
Her name is Molly, and it's said that after the stock market crash, her parents flung themselves off the hotel's roof in despair. According to some reports, they took Molly with them. Other creepy occurrences include an elevator that rides to the 19th floor without being called there and a child's handprint on the wall of one of the penthouses that apparently will not go away. Their address is 20 West Baltimore Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21201. Oh, I was going to, I thought we already did this one, but it's not the same. <laughs> La Posada de Santa Fe. It's in Santa Fe. If you book a stay at La Posada, La Posada de Santa Fe, don't be surprised if you run into a few ghostly tenants. Past guests at this historic New Mexico property have reported seeing a phantom woman wearing a black Victorian dress with her hair slicked back into an Austrian bun. I don't know what that is. Many believe this apparition to be Julia Stab, the late wife of the hotel's original owner. She passed away at age 52 in 1896. Other hotel patrons have reported their gas fireplaces turning on and off, items disappearing from their rooms, and the distinct aroma of roses throughout the hotel. Julia reportedly loved to decorate the house with them when she was alive. The address is 3330 East Palace Ave. I can't talk. Let's try this all over again. Address 330 East Palace Ave, Santa Fe, New Mexico, 87501. Oh, here's one we know. We just talked about this one. And I, I don't know. Well, I think it made the top haunted list or something. But anyways... The historic Lizzie Borden House, Fall River, Massachusetts. So we've heard this one a couple times now. <clears throat> so once again, since I've heard it a couple different times now on this, I'm just going to wait to do a video on it until I actually go there. In the late 19th century, Abby and Andrew Borden were found brutally murdered in their home in Fall River, Massachusetts. The couple had been hacked to death with an axe, and investigators quickly accused their daughter, Lizzie Borden, of committing the heinous, the heinous crime. I can't talk. Although she was acquitted, Lizzie Borden's story has already captivated the public and has since served as the inspiration for numerous films, television shows, and books. The historic Lizzie Borden house offers daily guided house tours in the evening Courageous guests can partake in an outdoor ghost tour or roll up their sleeves for a hands-on ghost hunt of the first floor and basement. For even more of a thrill, stay overnight in the John V. Moore suite, the room where Abby Borden was found murdered in 1892. Who wants to sleep in this bed? This is original furniture. This is mind-boggling to me. The same thing as the Amityville house. When there is furniture that has been at a place that a horrendous crime has happened and there's blood and people have been murdered in there. Why are people keeping this furniture? Why? I don't understand. It's mind boggling to me. Okay. Um, you act like you can't get more furniture. I'm not understanding why people want to sleep in beds where people were murdered. I don't understand. Past guests have reported witnessing objects moving on their own, hearing footsteps and disembodied voices smelling strange odors, seeing apparitions, and more. Their address is 230 2nd Street, Fall River, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. 02721. Wait, I thought... Oh, never mind. That's not the... I'm thinking of the other one that's in Iowa. You guys know what I'm talking about. So anyways, yeah. Met, um, Fall River, Massachusetts, 02721. This one I've never heard of as well. The Sealbach Hilton, Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky. In 1936, a hotel guest named Patricia Wilson checked into the Seal, Sealbach Hilton Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky. 
to wait for her husband, who would never show. He was killed in a tragic car accident on his way to meet her, and in a state of despair, the widow either jumped or fell to her death down a service elevator shaft. Her ghost, nicknamed the Lady in Blue, for the blue chevron dress in which she died, is now said to haunt the building. The dress is said to haunt the building? I swear to God that's what it says. Her ghost, nicknamed the Lady in Blue, for the blue chevron dress in which she died. Oh, the, the Lady in Blue. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't understand how I missed that. Anyways, rumors have circulated about her lingering presence here since reported sightings of a mysterious blue-clad figure in 1987. Some hotel guests today say they felt cold spots or caught an aroma of perfume during their stay. This is an ongoing thing. We keep hearing about these women in a, in a state of despair. They kill themselves and they're stuck haunting this hotel. What did they think was going to happen? Okay, just saying. Anyways, the address is 500 South 4th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40202. There's that. So, and with that, guess what? We made it to the end, guys. I'm so excited. We finally made it to the end. That was the very last one. So, I don't know how long this is going to be because, like I said, we had part one. This is part two. Part two got split up because for some reason the GoPro decided to shut off. For whatever reason um which I'm surprised I didn't do again since I just said that I know better it's voice activated so anyways on that note if you liked this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you would like to see more videos about paranormal crime and conspiracies go ahead and subscribe we would love to have you and on that note I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Be safe. Bye.